What's up everyone, Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this object-oriented programming lesson, we're gonna be taking a look at the law of Demeter. Before we get going, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will get back to you for sure. I'm doing this example today in Ruby, but it should be pretty easy to get your head around if you're familiar with any other object-oriented languages. So you can see here that we have a simple invoicing example that I put together. We've got to keep the examples pretty simple, um, otherwise these videos get really long. Just lining a few things up there, but anyway, so you can look here and see we have a product object, we have a line item object, and we have an invoice. I'm going to go ahead and run the program just so you can see what the output is. So we'll say Ruby demo.rb. And you can see here that we get this little bit of output where it says t-shirt $39, shoes at $99, so on and so forth, and then we get the total at the bottom. Okay, so let's quickly run through all of this code, and then after that we'll look at the specs that I've written as well. If you want, you can pause and take down any of the code that's written here, and it should work just fine for you. It's all pretty simple. Um, so I have this product.rb file, which is super simple. It's just a class product with two uh, attributes, name and cost. We're setting those in instance variables. So that one's extremely simple. We have a line item, which is fairly simple. It takes a product as an argument, and then it just has one single method that prints out a message, which looks at the product's name and then says at the cost that it's at. And then we have a little bit more complicated object for the invoice. So the invoice takes in a set of line items. And if we look back over here at our demo, we can see that we put together these line items, which all took a product. As we saw, we put those line items in an array, and then we pass those line items into the invoice. So here you can see that what we're doing in the total method, which calculates the total of the invoice, um, is pulling the products off of the line items that it has so in storing the list of products in an array and then to get the prices we need to print out we're pulling the argument cost or the attribute cost off of the products and then we are summing those prices so that's a little bit of ruby in here with this ampersand colon syntax but basically just iterating through the line items and getting the products iterating through the products and getting the prices and then adding them up and then last, our invoice has a message down here, which is what you see printed out in the top left of my screen. Um, so we just iterate through each line item. First of all, we set up an empty string. We iterate through each line item and then add the message plus a new line character that you can see right here. And then we add this sort of uh, bars with the new line character and then we add the total message at the bottom. So that is all of the sort of main code. I've got a couple of specs that I wrote out. So I have a line item spec here. This is using R spec. And it essentially queues up a couple of new products, or, or a product rather, and a new line item for that product, and then expects the message to be what it is. And then same kind of stuff for the invoice. We queue up a bunch of stuff up here at the top because we have a couple of specs that all use these same things. And then down here, we actually just check that the total is right, and then we check that the message is right. And so we can see that our tests are green um, if we just run our spec over here. And just to be clear, I'm in this Demeter folder here. So I've got a top level folder, Demeter. And then just inside that, if you want to get our spec working, uh, you've got to have a just spec directory, which contains your specs. And there's a naming convention here with underscore spec. So um, that's kind of a quick flyover. Um, you should be able to kind of pause and get all the code if that's what you want to do. Otherwise, let's just keep going. Okay, so I kind of intentionally introduced a problem in the, in the uh, product class. So the product cost isn't really what we want to show up on the invoice or, or really at all when we're talking about what we paid. What we really want to talk about is the price because the cost would be more something that the store incurs to buy the product. So in other words, the cost would be what the store pays in order to put it on the shelf and the price is what you pay to take it home in a nutshell. 
So what I would like to do is just say, okay, maybe we just change all of these to price and we see what happens. Okay, so now let's run our specs again. And we're gonna see that literally everything breaks. And so let's just go ahead and undo and get everything back to green over here. And then let's talk about what's going on. So our line item receives a product in its initialize method. And then it talks to the product directly right here. And our invoice receives a set of line items and then it pulls the products off those line items and then it talks to the products also. So in object-oriented programming, there's this thing called the law of the meter. Um, I don't know that they should have called it a law, uh, that maybe that's too much, but in any case, um, it's kind of a pattern that you can use or a rule that you can follow where essentially you say an object should only talk to its closest friends. So let's take a look at what that means. So product isn't talking to anybody, so it doesn't really matter. The line item receives a product inside of initialize, so it knows about this product, they're close friends, and so it can talk to product because it has a direct relationship here. The invoice doesn't know about products, it knows about line items, and then it gets the products from its line item friends, and then it talks to the products. So it's actually jumping over a relationship to talk to the products in order to get the prices. So because everybody is talking to products, even through the relationships, uh, this is why the entire system breaks when we change something on product. Now it's not possible for us to change cost right here to price and have nothing break, but it is possible for us to change it and only have the closest friends who are talking to product break. So what this does is if you, if you follow this rule where you only talk to your closest friends, it adds a little bit more resilience and stability to your system because um, you can make changes and it, it only affects the closest friends and you can find those errors a little bit easier than if you have to fix everything in every file. So let's look at how we can do that. So to do that, let's go over to the line item. And we're going to add a method here, and it's going to be really, really simple. It's just going to be product price. And I'm going to call it that on purpose. And then right here, I'm going to just say product cost, product dot cost. And we can even change this to say product price right here. And then I can run my tests, and my tests are still going to be green. Then let's go back over here to um, invoice. And instead of having to talk to products now, because in my line item, I've got this nice product price method, what I can do is say um, prices equals line item dot map product price. And let's run our tests again and see if we're still green. And of course we are. And then what we can do here is say dot sum and just kind of get rid of this variable setting altogether. Alright, so I did say one thing slightly wrong. So let's say that we go over here and we change this to be price now. Everything is still going to break because at the end of the day this, uh, this is going to be trying to have cost called on it still and it's not there. So we're still going to get breakages everywhere. So that's not really exactly the point. The point is that now I only have to make one small change and it's right here. So we've isolated the problem. So now if I run my test again, I've just changed this one single word. So previously I would have had to change uh, it here and here. And now I don't have to do that, I just have to change it here. So this is a really, really simple example, but you can imagine in a more complicated system, having to make one change in one place could be, you know, saving you from having to make 25 changes or something like that. One last thing, which I'm going to save for another episode, I think, but in this invoice spec, we have to actually queue up um, multiple objects in order to run unit tests on the invoice because behind the scenes this invoice is calling out to other objects. Even if it's only really talking to line items, 
those line items depend on having to have products and so on and so forth. So what we can actually do is we can use what's called a mock if you're not familiar and instead of using actual objects that know about a whole bunch of other objects we can use sort of fake objects here and um, not have to queue all of this up. Now why does that matter? Because if you're in a much more complicated system you could have to have dozens of objects set up in order to run a little test and that becomes extraordinarily complicated. Um, now there's smart ways to do this and dumb ways to do this or maybe not dumb ways but at least worse ways um, so we'll probably leave that in another episode, but I think that's about it for now. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up and I will talk to you in the next one.